Yeah, for us, it seems like there's definitely something in the water here across the healthcare space with uh, yet another CEO looking to pull up stumps and uh, head out the door. Um, this time it was veteran um, CEO, six-year CEO of HealthScope, Robert Cook. Um, but at least the company did name a successor concurrently with um, Robert's um, exit. Um, they did name former Telstra CEO, or sorry, um, Executive Director Gordon um, Valentine. Now, Gordon, I, don't, I didn't know him. I don't know him personally. Um, he ran the division of the retail arm, $18 billion business back a couple years ago. Um, prior to that, he was an executive at HP and T-Mobile, as well as Dell. Now, Mr. Ballantyne, he will um, see the transition. He, he takes the reins in uh, mid-May, um, and Robert will remain available to the company, they said, until next year this time. So hopefully that will uh, ensue a, a smooth transition there. Um, you know, really for us, Robert's uh, decision really to pull up stumps, as I said, really not a surprise. Actually, it, it was um, thoughts around him leaving has swirled around the company since it relisted back in 2014. Robert is one that really is the art of the deal, as I kind of said in a note yesterday. He really likes the deal flow. Um, this is his fourth PE gig, and I, I just think it was just time for him to leave. It shouldn't be read that the sky's falling and all these CEOs are leaving, and it's time to bail out the industry by any sense of the word. However, I think the biggest uncern, um, concern sorry, and uncertainty is around uh, Mr. Ballantyne's entrance into the company um, and how he would perform, obviously, um, you know, given that he is an industry outsider. You know, he's a tech guy, pure play tech guy, as he, as he said from his, from his resume. Um, but talking to the company last night, I was reassured a little bit, talk, when talking to them, I talked to them at length, actually, about Gordon's um, or Mr. Ballantyne's ability. And they said, you know, he did have really strong leadership skills. Um, as well as um, a really understanding, broad-based understanding of highly regulated, regulated sorry, industries, um, and noted that he was a standout can candidate above both internal, there's 16,000 employees at HealthScope, as well as external candidates. And this succession planning has been ongoing for, they said, months, talking six odd months. So it wasn't like it was a short-term turnaround, they just got someone to fill the spot. So that was a little reassuring. But more so, and I did pass around last night in a flash note, um, uh, Mr. Ballantyne's first interview with the AFR, kind of little um, uh, excerpts from that. Um, he really talks about that he's really not in the uh, going to look at um, um, big changes, strategic changes afoot here at the company, saying that the really sh there's not really a shift in strategic focus to e-health and e-technology, so we're not going to be treated in the cloud. There's no connectivity going on here. So that's good to see. Really, the focus is on the core business and the $1.2 billion are really brownfields. These are capacity expansion programs. They're going to put through you know, over 760 new beds in these hospitals, as well as um, over 40 operating theaters by fiscal 2018, 2019 timeframe. And remember, that's a 15 to 20 percent uplift in their capacity and really underpins our earnings trajectory or double digit um, um, uh, earnings outlook in those years. He also said he wants to play a bigger role in healthcare debate ongoing, obviously, in this country as well as around, around different countries. Um, policy, uh, the policy debate, um, working to just have a sustainable healthcare framework to look at affordable healthcare and quality metrics. Well, that's all good and well. Um, but, you know, really, so does it really matter if Mr. Ballantyne's track record is really an, an industry outsider? Well, being the analyst that we all are, um, I actually did a little bit of work last night and I came up with an interesting PwC um, survey last year, 2,500. Um, uh, of the top world's companies in, in that survey looking at CEOs and 22% actually hired CEOs at outsiders. Now this compares, or sorry, this is a double the rate of the prior four year period that ended in 2007. So there's definitely seen a change and a lot more companies hiring industry outsiders. What were the main industries that those outsiders came into? Um, they were the likes of the telecommunications industry, um, utilities, energy, and of course healthcare. So it really seems that a lot of companies are really looking for a fresh pair of eyes or out-of-box thinkers in these highly regulated, really disruptive change type of industries and healthcare being one. Um, importantly for us, you know, our core thesis here hasn't really changed, guys. It's really the aging demographics. You hear me at nauseum talking about this, a growing population, as well as chronic diseases. No one's getting, unfortunately, healthier. Um, you know, you still have this country. Um, you have um, health, private health insurance still um, kind of the modus operandi. They're still, we're still incentivized to get to, sorry, to um, have private health insurance. Yes, there's downgrades of plans. Yes, there's affordability issues, but it's not really going away as far as the uptake of private health insurance that I feel. So that's all well and sound. 
So listen, you know, when I look at the stock and it was sold off 4%, that's quite stupid. 200 million of market cap wiped off by a new transition here. I think it's really excessive and overdone. Yes, it's hard. It's been a painful trade for me as well. I liked it at 230. I liked it at 220. Now I like it again. It's getting, like I said, painful. But at the same time, you look in for companies that are sold off unduly, and that's where it creates opportunities. So I think here you have an opportunity. Mind you, I've said before, and I'll say it again, it's over a medium longer term view. Near term, it's still, I keep saying it's in the sin bin, even more so now. Not as a sin bin, sorry, I'll take it back. It's really an uncertainty around the new management team. They did reiterate their guidance for fiscal 17. Yes, it's sluggish. It's only a single, couple single digit growth, but still it's not deteriorating. So the sky isn't falling in here, right? It just seems like it's a transition area, uh, a period. He's gonna come in, let's give him a chance to see if he, he works through and grows this company. But like I said, for me, it's really the brownfields and the capacity expansion programs in out years to drive my, my earnings growth. The stock, the stock is trading at an 18% discount to its long-term PE. I just think it's really excessive. It looks like an interesting opportunity to, to get into a, a good long-term, medium-term name for people with that type of um, time horizon.